today because if we don't follow up um we just we lose we lose the game bottom line all there is to it so this is uh you know just a few of the thought processes translating your raw smarts into uh, profitable greatness i think that a lot of us get stuck with uh all of this training and and we train and we train and we train but we never turn it into the profit um, and I think it's because a lot of people make it about profit. Mm -hmm. And and that's the problem. This has to be about relationships. And that's where we're going to go today because the CRM uh, is a relationship management system. That's that's what it boils down to. It's a con contact or cons customer relationship management system. And uh, people that don't look at it as a relationship in, in what we do and in most sales we will make some sales. But they'll always wonder why they can't catch the folks that are really knocking it out of the park. And that's why. So our daily goal needs to be changing others' perspectives and showing them how much we care. And in perspectives, that perspective also leads towards what we were just talking about. Whether we have a shift in the market and the market's going up or down, we need to help. We need to guide. We're the professionals. So if the market's going up, we don't want to set a low price unless we think we're going to get a bidding war and drive the price back up. But if we set a low price and undervalue and it sells immediately and uh, and we're happy we get paid, mm. that seller goes, but, but that one, just like mine, just sold for $20,000 more. What, what happened? Mm -hmm. And are they going to use you again? Mm -hmm. No, very doubtful. Um, and you're over there apologizing. On, on, on the other hand, if you do that and the market's on a downwards trend and they get a sale and trending can, the trending market continues to go down, they're going to be so happy you got them ahead of the mm -hmm. soccer ball, right? Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is lead qualifying and follow-up because these, these are the important things right here. We want to qualify uh, but and follow-up, but that qualifying starts with a conversation, which is a connection, which does lead to cash. But this is what it leads to. This is not what you should be working for. You should be working for that conversation and that connection. So quit wasting your time and frustrating yourself. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And then just, uh, you know, working with the best qualified leads. That's our goal, okay? So here's the deal. We prioritize. It's sales. Guys, no matter what we say, and people are always like, it's not sales. We're, we're just helping people. It's like, yes, we are, but it's still sales. Sales, you can care about people and be in sales. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I think it just makes common sense. So we're going to work the most qualified leads first because they're going to pay us. And we get to keep our family in food and shelter, right? And the families that are qualified. So it's like, uh, you know, even if you take folks to DR Horton, they've got to set up, or a number of most of the builders, they've got with their financing on who gets that home, yeah. a, a green light, a red light, and then there's this yellow light in the middle, you know? What's that tell you if you're looking at a stoplight? If they have a green light, that's the one the builders want to work with on the financing. They're the ones that are 100%. They're going to do this. They're in. They're good. Their credit's good. Yellow light. Yeah, their credit's a little shaky, but you know, they can they can do it as long as they don't go out and buy anything, mm -hmm. which is part of our job, coaching them, right? Mm -hmm. And that's in our app files. It talks about the uh, the laws, the 10 things that we definitely encourage people not to do when they're in contract. These are important to remember. So we want to continue to work with qualified leads, changing your paradigm, which is just you know, people's mindset. We, that's our goal. We, we need to make sure people are, are thinking in the correct, correct way and that you are as agents. And then realistic systems for follow-up. And uh, when we get into that, it's going to be what works for you. Just like I've said about getting leads, it's what works for you. What are you going to do? Because if you're not going to do it, just because it works for somebody else doesn't make it worth a darn to you. Okay? So let's get started. How to qualify a bar, buyer. I know we've gone through these things time and time again. But we're going to go through this uh, until it's just beat to death because it's so important. First thing, establish a conversation, establish rapport. If somebody calls you and wants to see a property, there's a reason I've always gone out and met them at the property. I want to meet them. It's it's cheaper for me to go meet them at a property and show them one property and say, great, let's get together and talk. Let me buy you a cup of coffee. It's cheaper to drive over and meet them at the house. And they're happy. You met them at the house and it's like, okay, you know, hey, let's see what we can connect with then. And what what do you have in common? That's the important thing. When you're when you're making connection, what do you have in common? Where do you live? What do you do? Uh, you know, and then get them talking about themselves. 
make it about them. It's their goals, their next level, their lives. And this is always the same in structured conversation. You can lead in such a way that you're asking them questions without them even realizing that you're qualifying them. They don't know that you're qualifying them. Some people will catch on. I mean, I've done this for so long. It was interesting working with Mark in here for the longest time working on our, our business because he was like, Kent, quit trying to sell me on your on your thought. And I'm like, I'm not. I'm just talking to you. I swear. Exactly. It's like, oh my gosh, it's part of your personality. So um, it is. But in sales, we're selling all the time. Whether I'm selling you guys on what I think is going to really benefit you and help you to get sales going, guys, this is a very hard year to come into this business. Anybody that thinks that this that you just get your license and, and you get leads and you make money in this business uh, is thinking of a different time period. Right now, this is challenging. We have to do these follow-up systems and get these conversations going. If you don't have these structured conversations where people are mainly talking about themselves, they're not going to feel like you care about them. If you talk more than they do, like I am right now with you guys, that's not a good way to have a conversation when we're meeting people for sales. We want to be the ones that learn how to uh, do the old trick of you've got two ears and one mouth, means you listen twice as much and talk half as much, right? Mm -hmm. If we get them talking, it's going to be the best conversation they've had in quite some time. And they're going to leave going, wow, and they don't need to know anything about you. That's fine. But they will know one thing. You care because you're asking these questions. You're helping them to get what they like. And that's where we're going here. If they don't want to share personal information, this is, I put gently, I wrote it first, you know, my usual, just ask them for their personal information. They're like, wait a minute. Gently. 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 <laughs> right. 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 Well, you know, I'll say I was at church and uh, out in Colorado and Pastor Aaron there at Praise Church where Paige goes, was talking about um, just briefly, how do we invite people to church? How do we talk to them about what we believe? How do we defend our faith? Gently. He's like, gently. He kept saying gently until it clicked in my head. Oh, you mean gently? I can't just tell them what I think. Right. Because if we do, people push back. It's the natural reaction. On the other hand, if we're just gently talking and we lean in, what's that body language you can say? Okay. If somebody's doing this, what's that tell you? They don't care. They're not really interested or they're backwards. And so I'll even ask people, man, sometimes when I sit like that, my back's hurt. Are you doing all right? Talk about knocking through barriers. It works. I, I Val always uh, cracks up with me because I'll just even in sales when I'm negotiating. Oftentimes I'll go, are you all right? Because you see somebody's facial uh, characteristics change or they turn really red. Because <laughs> that means, you know, we're getting a great price. No, They're not really right. happy. <laughs> right. But it works. So, you know, you start asking the questions. What do you like to do for fun? What an easy lead in, right? Um, if it's a different nationality, apparently uh, I keep getting hobbled by the rules and all of the terrible things that people do in our country. But the bottom line is um, we shouldn't ask people, um, what nationality are you, apparently, mm -hmm. even though it really interests me because growing up all over the world as a, as a Air Force brat, uh, I can relate on that level then. But I, what I'll do to lead into that, since I can't ask that question, I can say, man, it was really fun growing up and, and traveling the world a lot as an Air Force brat. I, I love that a lot. Uh, have you done a lot of traveling? People will kick in, right? And uh, so then sports, golf, fishing, boating. What do they like to do? Of course, boating is going to be in here and fishing because those are the things I like to do. And if somebody links on that, boy, can I really go down those trails. If they like <laughs> to golf, oh, boy, I stink at golf. So you know what I tell them? I stink at golf. I stink at golf. I play it. I literally, you don't walk me to the team. Well, you want to lose. Everybody talks about it. There you go. Everybody relates to being lousy at golf, unless they're a pro, and then they're really glad that you're admitting that you're terrible and they're wonderful. It makes them feel good. What kind of lifestyle are you after? You know, you start looking around our office to the right of the screen right now. Your lifestyle will guide you in fulfilling your dream the way you want to live it. That's what makes it your lifestyle, your way. It's our tagline, but it's not just our tagline. It's what we do. And that's why we're, that's why we went down these trails with what the website says. Uh, what kind of work do you do? How long have you been doing that? This is another key thing. Before yeah. they can ask you how long you've been a real estate agent, if, if you're new or after, you turn the table back to them. You know, oftentimes when you're younger, 
what happens? How long have you been in real estate? Right. And the self def the defense to that, I mean, I, I'm going to call it self defense because it, it, you need to, you need to know how to answer these questions. You got an easy one. Yeah, well, my family's been in real estate for 25 years. Right. Yeah, you got an easy one. I feel like I've been doing it forever. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then what do you do immediately? Oh, right. What do you do? right. Well, that's we've been working on these trends and everybody that hasn't been coming in and paying attention to these things, come back. Because it may seem like we talked about the same things over and over again. And we do, and there's a reason for it. Yeah. It needs to be ingrained in your head to where these things come out automatically. Okay. And it doesn't matter how old you are. You can be 45, 50 and just gotten into real estate and people still will ask, how long have you been in real estate? Yeah. Man, seems like forever. How long have you been an engineer? <laughs> Boom. You just shifted it back to them, start asking them questions about themselves. And all of a sudden, everything you say is great. But the way you defeat that too is if they're looking at a community, be knowledgeable. Yeah. Study that community before you meet them. You can be a you can be a community pro in what do you think, 30 minutes or less? Yeah. yeah, I think within 30 minutes or less, you can. You can know where the lakes are. You can know where the walking trails are. You can know where the pools are. If you're meeting with a client, and I'm sorry, I'm going down these trails, but they're important. If you're meeting with a client and you've gone through these things and you figured out how many family members they have, their plans on relocation, these, these are the questions we're going to ask. Have you spoken with any lenders yet? If yes, who? May I contact them? You know, and uh, can, can, I, can I give them my information? And some people will be like, uh, well, it's kind of like when they come to an open house. I'm working with a realtor. Oh, that's great. With who, who, are, who is it? So I can tell them why. You tell them you can't. Some people will go, uh, um, and they'll stumble around. And they'll come up with a name. Well, that's great. Glad to hear it. If they're not working out uh, really well for you and taking care of you, I'd be honored to help you. Not here to, to like uh, hunt you down or stalk you or anything. But if you need professional assistance, I'm here. And uh, when you go down that trail, what do we just do? We defeated their, their statement. Mm -hmm. We convinced them that we are the professional in the area, or we stated it, and that we're willing to help them. Not that we are going to pursue them and chase them down, which honestly, if they say work with me, stalk them. Goodness gracious, guys, don't leave them alone. If they say they want to work with you, they want to work with you. Yeah. They mean it, which means now. Yeah. Now, like today. Okay. And then no matter what you're doing, I don't care if it's 11 o'clock at night, guys, we're in sales. In sales, 11 o'clock at night, crap, I really want to go to sleep. I'm exhausted. I told these people I would do this today. Mm -hmm. Guess what you have to do? Yeah. Get your butt back out of bed and do what you told them you'd do. Many times. Get it to <laughs> me, too. Get it to <laughs> me. You lay down in bed, you're like, yeah. oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're yeah. It's like, oh. That's because it's quiet, your brain's quiet, so your brain can finally be like, didn't you say this? I didn't. Yep, it's very oh, little. Isn't that you lay down and it's very yeah. Yeah. And, and we're going to get into that about some other things, how our brains track at night, even when we sleep. So sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and go, first thing, it's like, quick, oh, I forgot. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. But it just means do it now, right? So when we're doing these things, think about this. I mean, and, you know, keep remembering. When I say scripts, guys, I like scripts. And why do I like scripts? Do you guys have an answer for why I like scripts? So they send a reminder and give you a basically action plan for that conversation. Okay. Is it something that you read? Yeah. Yeah. Is it something you read when you're talking to somebody? I mean, you can read a line if you want to think about it, but yeah. it's more of not in front of you. Like, so, um, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm like, no, like, <laughs> right. like, yeah, page not, yeah, page two and a half, right? Right. Um, we, don't, right. we don't want to come across that way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which I feel like most sales in general, yeah. um, anything, most sales, anything at all, anything frontier to home oh. sales, to anything, um, there you can feel a script. So if you can yep. make it in your own way, but add the importance of said script. Then you're able to, people don't, they just feel like they're talking. They feel like they're, they're genuine. And that's the goal. So, the reason the reason a lot of companies use scripts is they've got guys on the phone making 50 calls right. an hour. Right. And literally 50 calls an hour. Yeah. So, these are the cold callers. Yeah. They've got to have the thick skin and for yeah. us, the armor of God, because yeah. it's it it really messes with your psyche yeah. when you get people hanging up on you. Yeah. yeah. Are you looking at my home? I rent. You know, all, all these all these things you get. Uh, and you know, you don't get a chance to talk, but it's, yeah. it's different. Did you finance your car? Right. 
And and it's not that we Okay, that's perfect. But you know, what if we get people, even on the phone now, talking about themselves? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. You win a client instead of just a sales lead. So this is called uh, conversion. Uh, we can call it whatever we want, but the bottom line is sales. And I've been doing this for so long, guys, that uh, this is where it's interesting to try to get it to come out of my head on paper uh, so that I can express it well to you guys. But I've been doing this since I was 17, not real estate, but sales. Um, and uh, back then, I was top salesperson for Mary Gable Water Conditioning System. Why? Because I talk to people. I got them to talk about themselves. I like people. Boy, does it make it easy when you like people. And I'm not trying to sell them something that they really don't need, you know, uh, or it's going to blow off of their house here, cause damages, things like that. Um, so let's see how many of our client profile questions you can get answered without it sounding like a script, right? So guys, F, F files, right? And I don't mean to continually uh, kind of push back when, when you guys ask me questions, even a, a Debian 9, right, Joey? Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, it's an app file. But sometimes it's a matter of where. Yeah, I had no idea. Right, right. Yeah. right. So sometimes it's a matter of where, so don't feel bad about yeah. asking questions. It's just, if I can say, boom, it's an app file, here's where you find it, or I think it's an app file, yeah. and I remember putting it in there, but where? Yeah. Leah, you know, yeah. uh, the, that's the way it works, okay? Yeah, because I went in, it's funny, I went into app files, and I was like, W9, I was like, oh, that's just like a tax form of W9. And that's whenever I was like, I need your help. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked at tax first, and I'm like, wait a minute, business. Boom, there was. Yeah. Uh, because it's about our business, so mm -hmm. W9 is on the front page under business. Yep. But these things are important. And so, remember, app files. Blank forms is where you go first, and under forms is client profile. Mm -hmm. uh, be sure to keep this. Now, this is one I would either print off or have in your phone, have in your resources, yeah. have it saved. Because even for me, I don't mean to make it sound that way. For everybody, it's tough to remember all of the questions that we really need to ask yeah. to get to a conversation that leads to a conversion, that leads to a sale. And then, guys, it doesn't just lead to one sale. This is what we're getting into today, which is our contact uh, management systems, but it's it's really about them using you for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. They're going to use who's ever, whoever is in front of them when they want to buy or sell. It's whoever they're working with. If they're at church with somebody, oh, there's one of our neighbors. We really love them. They're so fun. And they call you and apologize. Sorry, I used so-and-so, and they did a terrible job for me. We can't wait to use you again. Okay. And you know what? When somebody tells you that, okay, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm so appreciate you calling because I was thinking maybe I'd done something wrong. I love using that. It is a line, but it's good. Man, I thought I did something wrong, and uh, I was surprised you didn't use me. And uh, you know, uh, but we're friends either way. Mm -hmm. And then you know, oftentimes, actually, all the time. So, oh no, it was just because. Okay, great. So anyway, remember our scripts, our formats, guides, like Joey was just saying, not meant to be read or sound like a script. Remember this part right here. And uh, this is definitely um, something that's taught across the boards by every coach you talk to, to, that you want to speak in metaphors and analogies. You just really do. And that's the way it comes across as a conversation and the way we can get people to relate. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's qualifying the buyer. Um, consistent follow-up is everything. And, and this, this word is just huge. Because I, I was saying follow-up is everything, and I went, wait a minute, it's consistent follow-up. Yeah, I can actually follow up with someone once every five months. Right. <laughs> but and, and you know what? That may be enough for some people. But, uh, and it depends on if they're in the professional realm mm -hmm. uh, or what they do. It really does, and who they are. Wouldn't you agree? It depends on who people are as far as how often they want to hear from us. Absolutely. Okay. And also a relationship with them. Realize that too. Like I have one one lady that was a referral, and yeah, her her personality is, I mean, she texts me every day, like, mm -hmm. hey, send me more houses. And I'm like, well, there's no more houses in your bubble that you're looking for. But sure, absolutely, yeah. when they pop up, uh, they'll they'll be in your email, you know. And, right. And well, and yeah. how about when you first started into real estate and you were going through a lot of these things? Mm -hmm. I love thinking back on those times. But uh, when um, we we got you that introduction to Brian Juice, yeah. And now what's going on with him? Yeah, I'm I'm really. I mean, I I texted him and called him during the hurricane. Hey man, 
you know, praying right. you through the hurricane, don't know how the storm's going to affect you. And then yep. he reached out the same day, you two, and then down south more. And yep. the storm hit, he texted me, hey, how'd you fare? Right, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yep. doing good, doing good. I was like, it's coming your way. Let me know if you need anything. And, <laughs> and what is that? Yeah, it's a relationship. Right, absolutely. So um, not to say a storm is the reason for connecting with <laughs> But people. it was a great time to. Uh, it is. Yeah. If you look at my phone, uh, Valerie was like, what are you doing? You've been like staring at your phone yep. for two hours. I'm like, yep. I'm texting everybody I yep. know in yep. the area here, uh, yep. friends, family, and those that we've worked with mm -hmm. to see how they are. Yep. And I was doing a cut and paste of a basic. Yep. And but then in, you have to respond to everyone. But to to you. Right. It, everybody did. It's like oh my almost everybody did. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And then you know the scary part is when you say, Is there anything I can do to help? And then you be, start asking, yeah. be prepared yeah. to help. Yeah. 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 Don't just say stuff don't do that. I need a generator. Okay, our power's on. <clears throat> you can have mine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and you then take it to them. Yeah. But I mean, these that's really then that's me. That's a relationship. Yeah. And and that's the way I am. And it just shows who, who we are. Okay, so um, again, app files, friend blank forms, script, follow up. Use it, it works. And uh, a lot of my follow up scripts, guys, are from uh, the trainers that I've trained under and paid tens of thousands of dollars to train with mm -hmm. simply because I needed somebody to remind me oftentimes what I already knew. Mm -hmm. uh, but they help put it in a logical format, which is what we're working on right now. And um, they have picked through their brains on how they did well. Like Craig Crocker, I think he's fantastic. Uh, he's gotten more and more salesy now on, on the training, which doesn't thrill me. It's like, hey, come train with us, but you've got to buy this product, this product, this product, and this product to make it work. And uh, if you have a deep wallet, we'll get you business. And they will because it's about marketing. And if you're doing the marketing, you will get leads. Okay? So you need to figure out what works for you. But your subconscious mind. Works under universal law, whether you realize it or not. Um, it shifts the reality. And that's what uh, Joey was even talking about. And we were just talking about that when, you, when you're going to bed and your mind clears, boom, things pop into mind. So these are just some basic things that I was thinking of that are just awesome. What a, a mind of a man can conceive and believe, um, the mind of a man can achieve. Four minute mile. Uh, this is one of the Daryl Daigle statements that I was like, yes, absolutely. Um, as soon as people started breaking that four minute mile, the first guy, Mm -hmm. bunch of people oh it can be done yeah. yes it can be done can real estate sales be done in this market right now guys absolutely yeah. without a doubt without a doubt uh it's also a great time to start gathering listings um because uh listings is well i'm still convinced that those that list in real estate last mm -hmm. uh that's something that i heard right at the starting gates and i'm like yeah but how do you get a listing i'm brand new i don't understand uh and then all of a sudden it's not a relationship you're talking to people yeah, let me help you with that. And people are like, oh, okay, great. Didn't know you did that. I thought you were just a buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. So here's the fun. If somebody comes into an open house, all right, and people that are missing out on, on doing open houses right now, uh, I think it's a drag because, um, and there's a reason I ask other people to work the open houses that are like even on my listings. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. It's not, an open house typically is not going to sell that, that home. Right. It's just not. Yeah. But what it is going to do is generate buyers mm -hmm. and sellers yeah. So now if a, if a buyer walks in, you're talking to them, are you looking to buy a house? You're looking to sell yours? Are you just, uh, he's rubbing. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You're just kicking tires. Yeah. Are you wondering what's going on in the neighborhood? I've had people go, no, I'm, I'm looking to list my house. I want to see what things are going for. Okay. Well, you know, listing agent is what I am. I look forward to helping you with that. What can I answer for you? And I'll stop and get them to talk. If they're a buyer, yeah, I'm a buyer's agent. Because yeah. I am. Yeah. We're both. Yeah, I'm literally you're right. right. So uh, it's just fun to uh, meet people's needs and let them know that's what we do. So here's the other thing. It's all about your attitude and effort when you're following up. If if you don't have a positive attitude, yeah, I'm just following up because this is my 19th call and I know you're not going to work with me, but I wanted to just call and, and say hi and, you know, hope you had a good breakfast today. No. If you're in that mood, guess what? You need that day off today. Go to the beach. Get your head on straight. Come back and try again. But that doesn't mean every day you get up and go, oh, I don't feel like it. I'm going to go to the beach. Okay, you can do that in real estate. Remember, this is one of the highest paying uh, sales positions in the world in real estate. And it's also one of the lowest. It's the lowest easy job there is. And it's the highest paying hardworking job there is. So it depends on your attitude and effort big time.
And Leah, I know you're going to have to go to the closing when that time comes, uh, feel free, okay? Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm glad you're here. Uh, you need to visualize your big picture, your wildland possible goal. If you haven't written these things down, how are you going to consistently follow with other people if you don't even know what your goal is? Mm -hmm. And people are like, what? Our finances. If we don't have goals, how are we ever going to reach a goal? How are we going to get somewhere? We're going to, everything we see, we're going to go, hey, yeah, I ought to get my nails done and, and get that uh, French, whatever it's called, manicure done. <laughs> and, uh, and I think I'll get a pedicure today and the massage that goes with it because I have the money. You do, but gosh, did you really need that when you're driving an old Toyota that barely runs? You hope it starts when you could be saving for a new vehicle instead. Um, the reason I bring that one up, and sorry, Val, but uh, Valerie was doing this when we were uh, in contracting. And um, I'm, I'm just always playing with numbers a little bit. I, I really consider numbers a necessary evil. It's not something I really enjoy, but I just have to be good at it. Mm -hmm. So, hey, Val, if we take that same money and sit it in the bank, we could go on a cruise this year. She's like, say what? I'm like, yeah, look how much you're spending. So this is the important thing. If we don't have goals, how are we going to reach them? Yeah. Okay. So I want to show you how I've gotten my phone to ring year after year. That's the goal here. And it does. It rings. But a lot of that is what we just talked about, about caring about people during the storm even. Reaching out to them. And it doesn't have to be a phone call. When you're reaching a ton of people, that's when texting is important. Yeah. Texting no. has its place, mm -hmm. but so does the phone. if you want your phone to ring, you have to use it and ring other people. If they don't hear your voice, they kind of forget about a part of you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and they don't feel the love that comes through and the hey Joey, how are you, man? I just really want to check in on you. How does that sound versus text? All right. I've I've learned very quickly with some text messages that you can. You can glaze over them, or you're like, oh, man, they texted me. I'll text them back soon. Mm -hmm. Well, phone call, most of my reaction is, why are they calling me? Not not always a negative, but like, they okay? Like, you know, I haven't heard from them in a while. Right. Like, what, what's going on? And then, you know, I'll pick up. Right. Or, or, hey, man, I'm so sorry. I, I missed your text. You know, the other day I I opened it, and, you know, just, right. it just went into the abyss, you know, right. or... Or I thought I responded, your text is in my bubble, just sitting there, you know. And some yeah. people do this better than I do with text. They don't open and read the text mm -hmm. until they have time yeah. to respond to it. Yeah. And that has its place. <laughs> my bad thing is I'll look at it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I had I had I had oh. 75 yesterday. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. So I, I literally I learned the trick is this guy, at least with iPhones. And sorry, you can see it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can hold it. Right, you're able to read it, mm -hmm. and as long as you don't click on that bubble, it stays. Oh, it stays that's nice. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Yep. Okay, I would like. And so I learned that, and so the only thing is I actually have to cool. still open it sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, ah, crap. I think that they have to respond. To me. <laughs> <laughs> but I told somebody, I was like, can you just text me again so I have the. I, I do that all the time, all the time. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. So these are important things to care with each other and learn. But guys, the big thing here is we need to target our message, mm -hmm. okay, to those we're trying to reach. And we need to be consistent with a clear USB. Everybody know what a USB is? Mm -hmm. What's it do? Puts that to your heart. Mm -hmm. It's you get it. something it's different. Awesome. Yes, it yeah. differentiates you. Mm -hmm. And it's what you use to get people to call you, all right? And uh, it's your value proposition. And this is from Craig Proctor's trainings. It's a huge one though. This, this part is a lot of his work. Um, I'll sell your house in 30 days or I'll buy it. Mm -hmm. The Duncan Duo team still use that one. And um, the, the way you do that, and I used to do it, there, there's a, a big asterisk by it, of course. It's like, nope, nope, not just because. I'm not buying 100 houses. And, and that's not what they're doing. They're not buying 100 houses mm -hmm. uh, a day or a month. What they are doing is saying, hey, here's, here is the 30-day sales price on your house. Mm -hmm. If this is what you'd like to do for me to honor my, I'll buy it, it's that 30-day uh, sales price less 6%. Doesn't mean that's our commissions. It's just less 6%. Mm -hmm. And that's how you establish that part of your USP. 
There are other people that say, I'll buy your house. Not I'll buy your house. I'll just buy your house. Yeah, there are those too. And a lot of those uh, big companies right now are starting to fail as the market trends backwards. Uh, they're they're going down. Open Door's having a problem now. Yeah, uh, it's it's yeah. big stuff. Open Door. And, Zillow had a huge problem with it. You know, what's the other one? Redfin's having a problem with it. But anyway, um, the, the, it's important to know what our value proposition is and how we're going to use it in our sales. Right? Okay. So now, um, conversation connect cash. It's just the way it works. Um, I guess that instead of cash, we could say customer client. You know. Lifetime relationship. That's what I'm shooting for. <laughs> um, but in app files, you go to the guide, building successful relationships, and it talks about this very thing. Uh, th there's a reason that we did all of these things in app files. Uh, they really tie to our trainings. They tie to your daily life as a real estate agent uh, slash broker. Okay. So you have to use a system for knowing the type of people you're working with. That was the other thing I was just talking about. You know, how many times do you call a person? You know, it depends on their behavior style. Are they amiable, expressive, analytical, driver? What kind of person are they? Believe it or not, a driver doesn't want to be called a bunch, but neither do they want to be bothered with the details. It's like, just tell me the bottom line. I'll either buy it or I won't. I don't, I don't want to know all the features. Unfortunately, I fit in that uh, position a lot. So like even the, the car I'm driving now, it's... Uh, Angelo brought it around. It's the only car I drove. Mm -hmm. He knew what I was after. He knew what I wanted before I came on the lot. That's a good sales rep. And that's who I'm looking for when I go into any sort of uh, purchase. Do they know what's on their lot? Did they listen to me? Did they, do they know what I like? Are they making it about me and my lifestyle? Angelo is very good at that. Up at Loki Nissan. Let me give him a little pitch here because he's fantastic. He's also their top sales rep. Guess what else he'll do? I forgot your uh, floor mats. Yeah, you can come pick them up. No. I know it's already 8 o'clock in the evening, but hey, why don't I, I'm just going to drive them down to you. I'll be there in about an hour. Mm -hmm. He'll do that. And man, he knocks it out of the park. But with a driver, it's like, I don't want to know all the things the car even does. I still don't know all the features on that thing. I just don't. It's, it's their top electronic model. And uh, I'm not the analytical guy that really learns all those things. I need Joey to get in the car to tell me what it does. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, I sold one of my cars and found out that you can push the remote and all the windows open before you get in it. So it pulls the car off. I'm like, I never knew that. Joey's going to get in there and be like, you know what? It drives hands free, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. even touch the wheel. Yeah, yeah, it drives yeah, it's you. Wheel. <laughs> I don't know how bad that, that one actually does. I, 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 I kill all that stuff because I like to drive my car. But anyhow, it's important to know if somebody's expressive, you'll know because they're using your hands. But again, if, if you learn their behavior styles, you'll know how to address them. Mm -hmm. If they're analytical, if, if they're a CPA, give them data. Mm -hmm. They love data. Give them everything about the community. Give them every sale in the community. Go back a year. They'll love you for it. And then they're going to start breaking it down and they'll, they'll know what they want to offer on the property. But here's what also helps. You tell them what to offer on the property in your opinion, but here's all the numbers. Tell me what you think we should do. It's always their choice, right? But you need to know. Uh, you know, and if somebody's just agreeable with everything, then that's kind of always scary. <laughs> All right. Opportunities convert into conversations. Um, and we are, we are, this, these are all follow-up systems, guys. This is not necessarily your contact management system, but it's the way to use your contacts in your management system. And your contact management system is all about relationships. That's what we're discussing. So when you meet somebody, what are you first trying to do? Get to know them. Yeah, it's just a connection. You just want to get to know them. And the best way to do that is? Ask questions. Ask questions. Perfect. Okay. And then you can kind of start to figure out what kind of person they are, right? Mm -hmm. not, not necessarily are they good, bad, whatever. Are they a believer, non-believer? That actually usually comes out in the wash real quick, too. But uh, this is about their personality style and how you are going to be able to serve them really is hugely affected by their personality. So, you know, uh, a driver isn't going to be wanting to be reached out to every day. They want to be reached out to when you have the house that they're supposed to buy. Yeah. And they want you to tell them, I found it. You need to buy this today. I'm not kidding you. This has worked so well for me over the years. 
guys, I found the house. It checks off all your boxes. We need to go see it today. It just hit the market. If we don't, somebody else is going to buy this house because it's priced right. It's got everything you want. I'm sorry, we're out of town. Okay, well, let me do a video walkthrough for you. And let's put the offer in today still. It's the one for you. Mm -hmm. If you're that sold on it, guess what they're going to do? Well, geez, they've really listened to me. They know me because we already have a relationship now, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to believe you. Yeah. And guess what they should do? They should tie that house up and then they should come down during inspection phase and check out the house. Yep. Okay? Take pictures of every stinking angle of the house, FaceTime them. You don't want any surprises. Yeah. Okay? So that's important. So the more, uh, let's go back to here. Uh, opportunities converted into conversations. Uh, you'll more quickly key in on opportunities as they present themselves. If you study the things we're talking about, you'll recognize the opportunities. Does that make sense? You know how many people let opportunities go by? Okay. Well, here's here's my thing. Um, I think all you guys know, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart. Right? I want to serve him. I kick myself and kick myself when I miss the opportunities to talk to others about him. When they open the door and I just happen to be tired or I just uh, I miss the response time and I don't get to tell them or invite them uh, to, to a function or something or to church. It's like, oh my gosh, I missed it. Same thing happens in everyday life and everything we do. So right here, as the opportunities present themselves, we recognize them. Uh, and you'll be one of the few that has a focused plan, your prioritized strategy already, and that goal and vision, okay? If we don't do these things, and this is a basic business plan, guys. And um, if you haven't seen that, go on app files, look up basic business plan. I'm sure it's in there. Uh, if it's not, we'll do it. And as you guys go through app files, keep in mind, if you see something that you don't, don't uh, or you can't find what you need, let us know because most likely I have something already in there and I'll just tell you where to go. If I don't, we back up like with Joey the other day. Mm -hmm. They can't, you got this great buyer's guide in there. Where's the seller's guide? Crap. It's in there now. It's in there now. Okay. So, um, you know, it's just those things. Um, once you have the quality of life you're looking for, guys, how do we get that quality of life? And what is quality of life? These are things you have to answer for yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I can't answer that for you, but it's important if you uh, verify your quality of life because, you know, your quality of life, a big house. It might be if you got a bunch of kids running around. If it's two people, do you need a big house anymore? Yeah, probably not so much. It's a lot to care for. So, you know, these are things we listen to people and we help them find the quality of life they're looking for. Um, use your team resources. If you're out of town, reach out to somebody else, ask them to show the house for you. And here's the nice thing. With our team, you don't always have to say, hey, I'll give you 25% of you just go show this one house. Now, would you just please go show this house for me? I really need the sale. I want to get the sale. Uh, next time you have a buyer and, uh, and you have something going on, please call me. I'll go show the house for you. Right? That's the good part. Use your team resources. Will I go on a listing appointment with you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you need me, absolutely. Um, I enjoy it. So it's not a problem. Always remember, real estate's about relationship, guys. Be likable. Be likable. This is just be nice. Be likable. I don't know um, how people go through life not wanting to be likable and wanting to argue their point as to why they're right about real estate and here's why you should buy. I, I, you know, we'll all meet realtors like that and, and those that, uh, let's just say, get emotional, the ones that yell at you and slam the phone down uh, when you are making an offer on a property that they don't like. It's like, boy, that'll make you really want to work with that agent again. Find points where you can connect with these individuals. And that's what we were talking about earlier, but it's just so important. Study your scripts, your scripts, educational materials. They're just educational materials. Then having confident conversations with people. That's not me saying that. That's this trainer right here. Okay. And he says, be a coach to your clients. We don't have to sell them. We need to coach them. I think that these two things are the same thing, but it depends on, on the perspective. Okay. But we're there to coach them. And, them. and remember, we'll post this, this on uh, our app files too, guys. You can go back and check it out. Don't frustrate yourself. Know what you're doing. Success is no accident. It's hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrificing, and most of all, doing what you love. It's all about relationships.
So uh, by being able to share these items, you'll know your craft, your trade. And I know you guys have heard me say this over and over again, even in this discussion. Know your value. Know your value proposition. That's number one. If you don't have one yet, you should take a day. You really should. Sit down and just start writing down the things you like about yourself and what you bring to the table that somebody else doesn't. These things like honesty. Yeah, everybody puts that out there. I'm number one. Everybody puts that out there because everybody's number one in something. A lot of people are number two in my book, but you know, just saying. Um, these, these are things that you need to write down and figure it out and, um, and go from there. Uh, a value proposition can be, uh, you know, I'll understand your language, whatever. Uh, fast pre-approval, guaranteed accuracy, uh, your lender teammate. You need to have, you need to have your own team within our team. Okay. You need to know which one of our lenders or one of the lenders we work with, uh, makes you happy. That does what you want. That answers the phone when you call at eight o'clock at night because your buyer needs an answer now. Don't abuse them. Don't abuse them. If you do that consistently, uh, it'll burn them out and they'll start saying, please call me back here in business hours. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. You know, I do that sometimes to you guys, but if it's an important call, say, Ken, I wouldn't call you, but they'll be like, okay, sorry. I've done it many times. Right. <laughs> Ken? All right. You know, <laughs> That's and, a hospital day. <laughs> right, right, yeah. and, you know, then I'll do whatever I need to do, but if I'm tired too, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. you know, and don't take offense to that. Back. Well, you're tired. Um, so we just need to know. Um, but figure out your teammates. Now, teammate, let's talk about that. And, and we'll get into, let's get into that a little bit later. Maybe you can remind me about team building for yourselves when we get into uh, even a, a buyer's guide and a flow chart in a few minutes, okay? Financing options. You need to know. If you don't know what's out there, you'll lose buyers. Mm -hmm. Hey, sorry, I, I haven't had my job for more than a year. Or actually, it's been 14 months. The lender says it has to be 24 months. Okay, to get the best rate, yes, it does. Can I get you qualified now for 12 months? Yeah. Guess what? I can. It's a different lender. You're going to pay more. You're going to pay a, an additional uh, uh, fee because uh, that's what they do. Uh, the rate's too high. Now buy it down. Okay. You're going to stay in the house for 30 years? It's worth buying down a point or two. Um, and, uh, and or, guys, this is a big one right now with your buyers. Oh, my gosh. Instead of negotiating with a seller about their price, Ask them to buy the rate down for your buyer so it makes sense to them. They can now buy it. It's in the price point and the monthly payment range that they can afford. Yeah. That monthly payment range affects more buyers now than the overall price. Right. If they can, even if they have to pay a little bit more and the seller puts $15,000 down to buy their rate back down to under 5%, mm -hmm. you'll go when you have a sale. And they're happy. Everybody's happy. Okay? Yeah. So important things to know. And goodness gracious. Talk to the listing agent before you bring them an offer. Amen. For sure. Amen. Just talk to them. Say, hey, what's your seller looking for? My buyer's really interested. Yep. You, you can make the deal almost ahead of time uh, by, by knowing uh, how to approach things properly. Because sometimes that seller wants their number. Okay. They want their number. Let's make sure that's that number is there. That's the first thing you're going to see. Mm -hmm. You mind if they pick and pay title? Okay. Would they be willing to maybe... Do a three percent contribution towards our buyer's closing costs, prepaids, uh, things like that. No, well, yeah, I'm sure they would. They just want to see their number. It's so funny to me, but I'm going okay because it's it's the shell game, mm -hmm. just like when you go in to buy a new car. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they do the give them take away, especially if you're trading it. But it's just important. So know those things. Talk to them, and then uh, bring what you tell them you are going to bring them, or tell them straight up that hey, I hope that this is what I can bring you. I've got to get this through my buyer first, right? But if you get agreed to one thing and then you bring them something totally different, that buyer, that selling agent, the listing agent is going to watch out from you from there on out and they'll know your name. They, they just will know you. I mean, I've been doing this for quite some time. There are a lot of agents that I would just soon not work with because they're not honest. They're not forthright and they don't do what they say. It's people. It's just people. Okay. But you can tell those that care versus those that are for a paycheck. So know those financing options from credit scores, down, down payment, closing costs, mortgage qualification. Can you get somebody in the uh, uh, home right now for zero down? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you can. Just, your rate's going to be at 8%. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, or it may even be higher. Right? But a lot of people, that's okay. Yeah. And or 
or they see it as a longevity. They're like, oh, I'm gonna refinance. Yeah, I can't afford the payoff on a 30 year mortgage. Uh, you're young, you want to do a 40 year mortgage? Yeah, they're available. I was like, I haven't seen anyone officially offering it. They're the available. They are. They're available. Yeah, I'm like, I just saw a 50 year mortgage. I'm going, what? are you kidding me? Please no. Yeah. Uh, but it depends on the people. And I think that's a terrible idea. But for some people, it still puts the roof over their head. They're happy. And they'll refinance when things right. drop. <laughs> so, you know, know the guidelines when in the loan process and keep them in the lines. And you, it's your job to keep them in the lines. Talk to them. Don't just get somebody in contract and step away. Be there for them. Let them know. Don't buy that new car right now. You won't. Your debt to income ratio goes off. You now can't afford the house. Nice job. I hope you enjoy your car. You're gonna live in it. It's the way I feel sometimes. I don't tell them that. But I sure think that. Um, okay. Inspector. You know, know your home inspectors. I want inspectors that are thorough, but not deal killers. Mm -hmm. um, and and there is a difference. Some people panic when there's a great big long repair list on a house. Not me. I just go through and go, guys, it's a screen. This mm -hmm. this needs caulking. Mm -hmm. This is a handyman list over here. Now, it needs a roof. Let's talk about that one. Mm -hmm. It needs an AC system. Let's negotiate those two. It has cloth wiring. Right. Well, that's it. Bulb, bulb, and tube, <laughs> bulb and tube wiring is scary stuff. Yeah. Uh, and those things need to be dealt with or you can't get it insured. And um, some people got it insured because they didn't have it inspected thoroughly. People didn't do their job properly for them. Which then, are they going to reuse the agent that they used when they bought that house? Nope. Very doubtful. Yeah. They dogged them because they used a lousy inspector that was not thorough. I would rather know up front and negotiate it than find out things after they move into the house. And in two weeks, they call you and go, what the sink's backing up. And, and I think that the sewage system's backing up into my shower. I've had it. I I've had it to where it's like, where, where even even a thorough inspector misses from the yeah. FIs. But on that one now, we need to we need to know our craft, right? Because, mm -hmm. guys, here's the age of the house. Most likely it has cast iron drains. Yeah. We need to point that out to people. My suggestion would be during your inspection phase, you have have those scope for the camera so that we know if there's any bellying in the pipes. Because if there is, they'll back up. It's important to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those are things, again, if we know ahead of time, we can negotiate. We are negotiators. You know, we're we're honestly we're marketers and negotiators more than salespeople. It's interesting the way it works. All right. So know your team. You have to evaluate your own delivery, methodology, message, and approach stuff. When you're talking with your your buyers and sellers about these things, you need to, my suggestion, either stand in front of a mirror or put your phone on record and talk like you're talking to a buyer or seller and listen to yourself. Would you believe yourself? It's important. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just practice. And here's the part I was talking about on building your team. Uh, you know, with, with the buyer's perspective, they find a realtor they can trust. And this is also in our buyer's guide. Um, but, you know, you analyze your needs. But this is where you go down through how things are done and you get into here, you wrote the offer, you're negotiating, my favorite part. Um, and uh, you get into here, but now you need a home inspection uh, and pest inspection. So that's part of your team, right? And then that removes the contingencies after you get past that point. How about um, you need a mortgage application? That would be your lender, right? Better be part of your team. And uh, an appraisal. You don't have any choice in this. You used to. Not anymore. It's it's a blind grab on the, on the uh, lender's part. If we're rejected, what do we do if we're rejected? Okay. And underwriting. What do we do immediately? Already in contact with a couple other lenders. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, because your team is broad. Yeah. This is my preferred team that I work with on a consistent basis. But, oh, just in case, I've got this guy over here. Yep, they're going to charge points. They're going to charge, you know, probably an extra $8,000 to get the loan done, but they can get it done. Mm -hmm. Should we go over there? Why wouldn't we? And we then, if you're a good agent, we talk to the listing agent. We let them know that this uh, lender, we didn't put in their box. If we would like a Bank of America or something, they have specific check boxes. They'll give you a very good rate typically, but you have to really fit in their box for lending versus going to a mortgage broker that can go outside the lines and find who will finance you. And uh, anyway, these, these are again, you know, it's good to know surveyors. Uh, what surveying company uh, are you going to tell them to call? First choice surveying is uh, one that uh, is very commonly used in our area because they're very quick. They'll get it done. Not necessarily the best. 
Okay. If somebody's looking for specific fence border lines, things that they're going to put up, um, you know, you, we need to talk to them and let them know what you're doing. If it's just a sale and we're just looking for boundary survey, they're great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's differences. And um, then title company. What title company do we want to use? This is all about your team building. Okay. And this is all important when we're going, and this is all things, again, that relate to that relationship and our contact relationship management systems that we get into. So they take possession of the new home, they never hear from you again, right? Nope. No. So one of the things that Joey encouraged us to do too was uh, the gifts that I, I kind of stopped doing because um, I felt like they'd eat them and they were gone. So what we've done now and we're working on still is getting things that are about LRMS Realty. Uh, and you guys can have them for what we pay for them. This is not a money-making venture for us, but we now have mugs. We have the nice pens, not the plastic ones that we use on a daily basis. Nice metal pens that we can give out. Is there keychains come in? No, nope, still okay. there on those. We've got the, the I mean, this floating keychains, but they're the floating keychains <laughs> with our, and all with our logo, everything uh, done in that way. I don't even know what else we, we got. Some of your drug codes. Yeah. Yeah, we got yeah, coasters. We got coasters. What else are we getting? Um, we're getting water bottles. We have notepads. We have we notepads. Yeah, we're getting nice um, that uh, I think they're 25 or 30 ounce metal water bottles. They feel really, really nice. And the screen printed logo, so it's not just a place. Right. Um, and we checked it, or we, we, Leah, checked on a bunch of companies for this and uh, came up and had samples brought in and checked out nice ones. So then what we will do after every after everything is here, and a lot of it's taken months to get. Right. Once once it's all here, we'll put we'll put a package together and say, hey, here's what it is, and here's how much. Or if you just want to give them a mug, here's how much. Okay. So options for you guys. And the nice part about that though is um, it has our logo on it. It has our website on it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not going to say expo. Right. But it's this one. Yeah. Because seals it's a thermos it'll keep your stuff nice people will use it right or even in, in general those are also things that people don't always give away either right or they may just keep it they may just keep it in there yeah. um you know i have like three of those and sure. i just threw one out because it like completely peeled right well, like, i don't know you know i had it for yeah. 10 years right and, and it'll like, fit in your drink holder right the right. right somebody yeah. goes to the gym they're going to be carrying it yeah. um and or you care Right. <laughs> well, that's the thing too. It's marketing for us. Okay. So good things to do. So change your paradigm is where we're at now. Now this training is taking longer than I've been trying to. I've been trying to get these to an hour, but this one it's important to uh, take our time with. And not only that, this was supposed to be done weeks ago, and it gave me time to really work on this more. And the more I open things up, the more I add. Sorry, that, I'm not sorry. Uh, again, visualizing, guys. This is your paradigm. Big picture, your wildly impossible goal. What would be a wildly impossible goal? I'm going to sell 100 houses this year. Does that sound impossible? Yeah, wildly impossible. Until you set that that's my goal and you start working at it and start back breaking it down. Uh, for me, my goal has always been 36 homes a year. It's, it just makes it makes me happy, puts me in a great income level where, where things work out well. Uh, I can give a lot of money to, uh, um, you know, basically year. ties and things. And and crank it. Ties and things we can do. We yeah. all do. Yeah. But there's also times where you sell 12 well, right. and uh, you, it's actually more dollar value. Right. Than the yeah. Yeah. I think my high was 72 one year, but it was so weird. 70? Yeah, we, we were Total across the brokerage or just no, you? Just us. So, and, uh, but it was a lot of short sales. Right. And it was a nightmare. Right. But we just kept working. Right. And it was when the market was down. Right. Yeah. So the thing is, off of those, we made less money because the right. bank decides I'm selling to pay. Whatever. But anyway, figure out what would be a crazy goal. And it can be sales. It can be something that you want. That's fine. Yeah. Hey, look, I, I want, um, you know, a, a Lexus convertible. And if I can sell as many homes and pay cash for it, I'm going to buy one. Yeah. That's fine. Or... Hey, you know, my church really needs to have a, uh, a new kitchen uh, put in, and that's my goal. I want to buy it. Perfect. 
Um, and you know, we've done those things, not, not kitchens, but we've done bathrooms for churches and things where even we go and visit them and talk about blowing some people away. Yeah. We want to make sure you get a new, uh, bathroom. It's fun. Uh, your subconscious mind is affected by this visualization. Doesn't that just totally make sense? It is. Um, so here's what we were talking about earlier. Since you want to get there, your mind starts processing how to get there and how to get you on the right track or direction. Even while you sleep, it just does. Our mind comes up with answers when we sleep. Don't you guys all have that? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a normal part of our lives. And people try to make it about our five senses. It's like, no, our brain's always running. God didn't create a brain that stops. That's otherwise wouldn't dream. You need to be motivated to pay the price, get into action, stay on task, press on, study, think, plan. Guys, if you don't do this and you're not motivated, you're going to be really frustrated in this line of work if you're looking at it to pay your bills. It's just, you'll get a sale every now and then, but if you don't do the steps and things that we talk about in here, it just most likely isn't going to work for you. And that's okay. And, and you know, then maybe you need to look for another job and or uh, have another job that you work and this is part-time because that's really all you're working at anyway is part-time and if you're not after it you're not treating this as a business so treat it as a business motivate yourself here's the hard part mm -hmm. we're self-employed now right which means oh, i'm tired i'm just going to sleep in today no you get to be on the right side of the grass again today the lord just filled your lungs with air you woke up wahoo game on if you can get that attitude every day no matter how you feel you'll do great so get up every day looking forward to the task in hand. If you personally, this is an important one. Here's what I, I, I shared this with Leah before we, uh, or when we were just wrapping this up yesterday, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, my statement was get up every day looking forward to the task in hand. That's my attitude. You guys that know me, is that about right? Mm -hmm. I you, can't. You're, you're a morning person. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't wait to go. Let's do this. <laughs> I, I have FOMO. I'm gonna, I'm if I stay in bed, I'm going to miss something. <laughs> you know? I don't, I'm not really in bed. my island. I'm the night owl. You're, you're, you're in bed waiting in the middle of the night. But it's not, it's, it, it doesn't matter what time you get up right. and what cycle right. you're on. It's what are you telling your mind to think when you wake up? Yeah. Oh, I want to snooze. Do you really? Do you really? It's a new day. Man, look at that. I have an opportunity today to help people get into the homes they want. And by helping them, I help myself. it helps us too. Yeah. That's the way it works. Okay. So now that was my, my thinking. Then I was sitting in church and uh, this statement came out. Uh, I should give this to, I should put Pastor Aaron Trace Church again. Uh, because I included some of his notes in here because they're they're so accurate. And my mind doesn't go down the negative trail. It just it very rarely does. But this is this is common. If you personally feel like you feel fail every day, doesn't this happen sometimes? Doggone it. Why can't why can't I get a sale? Why why are these people not buying? Oh my gosh, they signed a contract and it fell apart again. They're making me write a contract that I know won't get accepted. Goodness gracious, Lord, help me. Okay, you're still doing your job. But if you feel like you fail every day, you resolve. Continue to pursue to bless others. The rest will come. It will come. This is not my statement, guys. <laughs> this is a pastor. If you personally feel like you fail every day, be resolved to continue this pursuit to bless others and the rest will come. Does that not apply to us in sales? Very sure. And he's the one that said, press on and be focused, even though that's the line I use a lot. This whole last part came from Aaron. I was like, wow, perfect. Right on. I'll write that out. Exactly. I did. I opened up my phone, put it in my calendar. I'm like, don't forget this. Yeah. Exact verbatim. Yep. Quick, yeah, quick. Yeah, take yeah. a picture of the screen. Yeah. yeah. That's the way it is. But, uh, you know, this job becomes fun when you're enthusiastic and your desires turn out to uh, just be a burning desire to reach that vision. Uh, but without the vision, guys, without the big picture that you're shooting for, without that goal, um, it's hard to figure out where you're headed. And, uh, you know, this, a lot of this was from the four principles of execution. Uh, it's a book written by Chris. So, um, another good book to read if you like books, which obviously I can't seem to put it down. Um, Keep going. five steps to transformation. This will transform your life guys have a value proposition. Um, come up with every challenging question 
that you think buyers and sellers are going to ask you about your value proposition. And again, these things take time, but, um, and this is an ongoing thing. If you get hit with something that you didn't expect to get hit with, write it down, study it, come up with the answer to it. Somebody stumps you with something, guess what? It's okay to say, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. But if they keep asking you questions, your answer is, I don't know, I'll get back with you on that. Are they going to think you know your inventory? Are they going to think you know your craft, your trade? They just won't. Okay. So it's important. Life effectiveness training. These are things we do ourselves. Overcoming objections. Know your next steps. Doesn't it just make sense to have a value proposition? Know the questions that people may ask you about that value proposition. And um, my value proposition, by the way, is what you see floating around this whole office. It really is. Uh, and, you know, if you guys want to cop me on it, that's fine. Just go out here and take a picture of that wall. And it's going to talk about your lifestyle, attentive, uh, we're resourceful, and it's your lifestyle, you know, all, all those things like it. Uh, but anyway, um, and market knowledge. I mean, it's just the things like that are really my value proposition is uh, how we treat others. And uh, it, it sounds like something everybody would say until uh, they start talking to other people and realize that you actually do. So you need to do this training though, and you need to know how to overcome the objections. You need to know your next steps before they come. When you're talking to somebody, this is how you lead a conversation, okay? It's no different than me doing, doing this uh, training right here and, and sharing with you guys my thoughts. It takes a while. Uh, to put this together um, actually takes me a lot longer than I think it should to do these things. But when you care, you figure it out and you take the time. And then you evaluate your delivery. Okay, If there's a time period that you're trying to do something in, keep it in that time period when you're working with folks. If you're working with a professional and uh, you meet them for a breakfast and you say, let's meet from 10 to 11, at 11 o'clock, hey, it's been great to see you. I know you've got other things uh, going on and it's important. And then they may tell you, hey, no, 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 i got a few more minutes. Let's talk about, if you have time, do. If you don't, it's okay for you to be the professional that's busy too. I'd love to, but I've got another appointment I need to, to be at. Let's get together again. Okay. Great. But then make it happen. Get it on schedule. Design and create new ways to capture your competitors' leads. Ever thought about that one? Hmm. Well, I think at this point in my life, I could parachute into um, a community in Georgia, community in Illinois, and I can sell real estate and I'll be one of the top agents in that area, probably within 60 days, simply because I know how to do it. Uh, and it is expensive. You do have to pay to play, but it would all be about marketing. And uh, I would target the area that has the highest conversion ratios. The, the area where sales uh, occur over and over again, people are coming and going. I don't want the one where people come in and, oh, this is great, we're gonna live here the rest of our lives. That's awesome. We wanna sell people those, yeah. but that's not the market you wanna target, okay? So you to capture competitors' leads, if, if they're at working a community, gather all their marketing material and beat it, okay? Unified vision, methodology, message, approach, Again, this is the stuff that I, I had on the other part too. But guess whose statement this is? You might think these things came from me. There's the first. When I started reading, I'm like, oh my gosh, and here's the fun part. We had rented a house, an Airbnb, and it happened to be Joseph Hertz. Really? Like, huh, that's cool. Yeah. And then it's like you start Googling them, and this stuff comes up, and it's like, oh wow, that's this is the training he does now. Yeah. Okay. But if you look at, you know, LMS Realty website, along with our app files, documentation, training scripts, guides, it'll help you do these things too, okay? Realistic systems for follow-up. You need to determine what relationship follow-up system you're going to use on a daily basis. If you don't use it, it's worthless, right? So it is a consumer relationship, relationship management tool. Um, so it's the CRM. This is what we use to keep in contact with our customers from initial contact, which is our marketing, through managing the sales process, wow, this thing jumping. ongoing interactions, customer service, keeping in touch. Think of it as uh, sales and a contact funnel. It's a funnel, okay? People start at one end, and uh, hopefully by the time they come out of the other end, 
Number one, they've not only purchased something or sold something through you, but they have a relationship with you now, okay? Relationships take work. I don't know how it went from one to three to five to seven. That's odd. <laughs> oh, um, you actually, you can see there's like a, a four there. Uh, that's interesting. But anyway, yeah. odd. I don't know. Anyway, no, we're not skipping points. <laughs> no, we're not. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so use your app bus. Honestly, uh, I've been using this more and more as uh, as my personal CRM because I can put the daily in. And the reason being that I can put things in a daily um, and include where the lead came from. I think that this is very important because now if you've got that from a referral from a friend, you remember to call that friend and thank them and uh, then to keep them filled out on how the transaction is going. A lot of them really like to know. Right. Okay. Oops, hold on. Um, so some of our agents like Joey are using Monday. I think you're still using that, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Others use spreadsheets. Uh, this would be a Kent. Um, some use their phones, which is not an effective for drip campaigns, but that's also a Kent. Um, uh, I, I have a bad habit of doing things some of the old school ways still. And um, I did use Top Producer. I found it expensive. I did not use it on a daily basis consistently, which made it worthless. You need to find which one works for you. Or MLS has a built-in CRM. Boomtown's a good one. Top Producer is an excellent one, but you have to use it. Wise Agent's very good. HubSpot's very good. Okay? So these, these are some of the systems you can use. But let's go here. If you don't want to spend a dime, okay, a CRM can be old school. It's a notebook. This is what we used to do. I, I literally had a binder with the plastic sleeves in it, and, uh, and we would update it. And it's it was I actually like it. I still like I still like my notebooks. I, I I write in my notebooks all the time because then I can flip back and go, oh yeah. But the thing I really like about our app files is I can put everything in it. Right. Um, I, I don't know how we're not burying their system, but I, I put pictures of the customers in when they come in here and uh, and I get to meet with them. I'm, Let me take a quick picture so I can put it in here and I'll send it to you guys as you know working with us in other ways. People love to get pictures of themselves. Most people. Some people are like, really? So yeah, really. Just so I work with a lot of people. I want to pass you at the mall and not go, hey, Joe, how are you? It's a bummer, but it happens to me. Uh, so take away from this. Uh, it's data organized and presented by a CRM platform leads to better understanding of your customers. Uh, this leads to better messaging and outreach, much of which can be done with automation. And now here's the problem with some of the systems I've used, guys. They're not automated. Mm -hmm. I do use automated now, and I'm even using, uh, you know, like our five-star uh, system. And, um, you know, you guys can brag about that, too. Um, our office, you can use it as the office, have been five-star rated for over 13 years now. You know what a small percentage that is? I don't even know how small a percentage is. It's less than 1% of all agents uh, are have done it for that length of time. Um, and that is something, again, that's generated by, by um, feedback. From our buyers and sellers that's not something that we do they do it so automation helping you offer better customer service the reality of it is i i'm convinced and I, I've, I've looked at these numbers more carefully agents that use a crm will close more deals and they keep track of their leads so here's the biggest bummer keep track of their leads isn't it a drag when you call somebody because you've forgotten them Oh man, it's great. No, I bought a house and we're thrilled. Then all you can do is congratulate them. Right. Ever had it happen? Yeah, yeah I have. That's frustrating. Yeah. How about one of your buyers goes to an open house uh, and you've been working with them now, but you haven't kept in touch in a, a week or two, and uh, they bought an open house from that agent because they convinced them to. And they convinced them not to work with you because apparently you weren't keeping in touch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it just depends. So th those are important things to remember as we go on. Was that the last one? I think it is. Yep, there we are, guys. So this, I think, uh, the big thing, all of this is about follow-up. The CRM is only as valuable as what you put in it and how you use it. Uh, and again, you can do it through free systems or free things you're already paying for. Our, our MLS, our app files. Um, I don't disagree. Joey, um, and you know what, guys, this is kind of where we're going to tap out and say, hey, we're really done with the training. Yeah, 
but we're going to have some more discussion here because um, I'm looking for now a CRM platform that I want to change to and use as well. But what I don't want to have to do is duplicate. I don't want to put it in app files and then have to duplicate it in another system unless the other system is purely for marketing needs and drip campaigns, which we um, personally, we've now narrowed down um, my contact list. I think uh, we, we, it was crazy. I think we've got it down to like 750 now or something, but uh, the problem with a lot of them is uh, once you have too many contacts, uh, they won't, they won't do it. They won't send them out in the drips. Mm -hmm. You have to do them in groups and or it'll it'll kick you out of their algorithms because it's they, they think it's just all spam mm -hmm. and so you know we got to be uh, precise about how we do these things what are you finding with mondays i like mondays um but i'm still trying to uh, I, I really am going back and forth from a couple different things i enjoy mondays for the fact of like how i have it all set up here is um come on uh, let me see if I can get rid of my little side channel here. There we go. So, I mean, like, I have it all here, right? Uh -huh. um, and, <clears throat> you know, these are all leads and et cetera. And these are all things that I've inputted. So, you know, my lead status, where they are in contract, et cetera, et cetera. You know, how, what is the lead? Where did I meet them, et cetera. So at the time when I was building this, it was because, I was working on pools and different things like that. So I have. How long have you had this system? Um, technically, it was since the beginning, but mm -hmm. I've been I've bounced because I really need to pay for it. So yeah. if I want to use it to the ability that Monday really is like incredible at, I need to pay for it so that I can truly build out automation so that I can one click send an email. I can one click send a literally a follow up email to title, or I can click send update email and it will auto send to the email that i've inputted and it will say you know hey just check it in how are you guys need anything from from the buyers or the sellers right where it's literally a button i click and then it would log it here but i would actually link app files to to that email too so right. app files gets an update that i sent an update email okay, so, um, so let's think this way too Remember what I was saying about I, I believe that an agent that uses a CRM will close more deals and they keep track of their leads. Mm -hmm. You've been doing that. Mm -hmm. Not only that, when you first started in, uh, you would not miss a training with me. Uh, yeah. More more yeah. like you would be in the office going, hey, what about this? How yeah. can I do that? Yeah. What about that? Yeah. And do you have time? Do we have yeah. time? And, and you were getting the personal coaching. Yeah. And I really think that that kickstart is mm -hmm. tremendous. Mm -hmm. and, and it really it really helped you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it helped me because by the more questions I get, the more my mind is firing and going, uh, and wow, I, somehow I know the answer to that. Right. Where did that come, right. from? Did that come from? from? I don't remember. That. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't remember, but probably right. Right. it just came up. But yeah. the thing is, um, how are your sales this year or in the past 12 months versus the 12 months before that? Oh, this year has been ridiculous in, in all levels. So, so okay. um, actually to the point where it was, it was, it was chaos to try to keep everything organized, um, where I had, I mean, there were months where I had six deals going on at the same time and I'm, right. I'm lost in communication and in reality, I'm good, but like, Okay, which title is working with you? Which uh, and then you know, app files really helped me organize that when we first jumped into that. Yep. Um, but then I've just learned like app files isn't that friendly here. Like it's it's not the best on phone wise. Oh. Very well on like an actual computer. Even on this, I'm like it's not it's not touch compatible that well. Mm -hmm. Um, and so man, I really need to find something that and you sent those comments to them. So I know he mentioned in our training the very they'll, beginning they'll that keep, they'll, yeah. they keep changing it. Yeah. Just like just like me with our training yep. and what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, they'll continue to modify yeah. that to meet our needs too. Yeah. And so they've gotten they some better in some of it, but it's definitely it's just their server. It's how the server's designed and how everything is, you yeah. know, to within your phone because it's a big what well, it's, it's a, a big program. It's a big program. Well, it's a big server. Right. And so everything's a website, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, but um, through that, they all you know the negatives and pluses so right now i've gone through i've I've done the the mls crm i tried right. that um i tried another one i don't remember what it was which again each one has like oh i really like that 
because this yeah. is hooked to the MLS. Right. But then I'm like, man, but now I have to have everyone into my MLS, which right. I don't, that, that's just, it. I feel like it's not utility well, mm -hmm. you know, um, for the MLS wise. And I always but, wonder if somebody hacks that system uh, and yep. just starts calling everybody, cold calling them. Right. They're going to get to people that uh, you haven't kept in touch with uh, right. for the last two months. Right. And they're so, going to feel from it. Yeah. So really, the, the way my mind works. Yeah. But more than anything with Mondays, I like it. It is something I was going to talk to you about in general. What is you can buy? They're technically called seats. And so it's how Monday works, which is actually why I haven't bought it, is because I pay, you'll pay per person in the organization. And so um, it, it can be $10 per person or $25 per person um, per month and et cetera. And so, but everything is, I mean, I have a full blown, this world in reality is my full. It goes from initial connection to from packet to next action step to when I connected with them, their price tags, um, if they've been added to the MLS, have they been pre-approved, um, like things that I, I, I'm i still right. building it, even where I'm like, I didn't think about that. And but I'm it only works it because? Because I work it. But that's yeah. where there's moments where I haven't worked it because I either got, I got so deep entrenched into something with other, with leads and et cetera. And I'm like, I really need to get back to Monday. But let's go there. And in our coaching, when you had six deals uh, running at the same time, what did I tell you? I can't remember. It was never, never forget to do your oh, lead run. Right, right. No matter what. Right. You're still yeah. marking. Right. Uh, so when you have, when you when you are knocking it out of the park and you're ringing that bell, you can't just stop your yeah. lead generation yeah. following up on these yeah. leads because they'll go away. Yeah. And if we don't do that, what will happen is these will all close and then you start into business again. Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh my gosh, the only way to keep this business somewhat consistent is always do your lead yeah. generation. Yeah. Right? And then definitely whenever, whenever I was cooking in the summer, it, it was, I mean, at, yeah, then at a newborn, it was just, there's a lot of stuff right. in the summer. And so, but now I'm feeling it, but again, the market is shifting, but yeah. now I'm, I'm, you know, I have two deals closing one this week, one next week. And like, but after that, right now, I have no other contracts. Mm -hmm. And now it's not that I don't have people that I'm sending stuff to or following up with. It's just like on contract right now. Right. And so it's just definitely a, whenever I was really, really cooking, it was, I, I did forget about this in the way of like, I just don't, gosh, like I'm every waking moment was related to something to these deals. Right. And, yep. and so it definitely, I saw hindrance after the fact of not, not a, negative because i'm really also focused on the families that i have in my hands right um but again business continues once they right. get and, home, and it's you know. hard to remember to do that but it's mm -hmm. so important when we're in the trenches and the yeah. whirlwind of our day yeah. is going it's hard to remember oh wait a minute i have this wildly impossible goal of selling this number of homes which means that great i've got these six but i, I, I need to read wait, i need another 20. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. gosh. Yeah. And yeah. Why did that change your perspective? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, this is great. And I've done everything with them. I need to stop. I need to not talk to them now. I need just an hour yeah. every day to do my lead generation mm -hmm. and uh, to stay on, ta on task with that. It's important. Yeah. And uh, so, like right now, uh, for me, I mean, you know, I'm talking about what I'm doing all that mm -hmm. often, except because uh, I don't want people to to feel less than in any way. It's just uh, I've been doing it a long time, and I yeah. enjoy doing it. And I think the only reason that uh, I, I feel confident in helping train you guys and lift you up is that I'm still doing it mm -hmm. and, and it works. I, I, but I've only got two buyers in contract right now. Um, good buyers, but only, only two buyers right. in contract right now. Um, but I also have three listings mm -hmm. and I have two more listings that'll be coming in. And that's because I'm doing my lead gen. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to people and uh, it's just so interesting. By the way, we might get a 20 acre piece out on well, 675 with a 4,200 square foot home. I'm trying to figure out how to price that piece. Uh, but it's, it's really interesting. <laughs> I am still going to get that little one I've been talking to you about. It yeah. Uh, on 51st, but yeah. you know, it'll probably be 275. Yeah, I keep thinking on that one. Yeah, that's <laughs> a great one. I keep thinking about buying that one. I, I, I really, it gnaws in my brain. Yeah. Um, but that's, so, that's the most difficult. And that's that's a whole nother world when you start correct. getting into that stuff. So, guys, I'm going to stop the screen share here. I hope everybody uh, got a lot out of this. And uh, I'll let Leah decide where to turn. Thank you.